Welcome back, crew. It's August, and we are diving into a new game of the month, the super heroic Marvel Multiverse RPG by Matt Forbeck. And today, we're going to be going into our first impressions of the system. But with our being our game of the month, you know, that comes with a lot more. Uh, next week, we're going to be going over how to build a PC utilizing the Marvel Multiverse rules. Uh, we're going to be building a Nihilus. Spoilers. Uh, we're going to be going building him live on the channel. Uh, then we're going to go into the core mechanics of the Marvel 616 system. Uh, then we're going to go into uh, something unique for the system. I'm not sure what I want to do for that yet, but as always, we want to give us something unique shout uh, just to kind of really show off what the system does differently. Uh, and then after that, we're going to go into our actual play of the Marvel Multiverse system. Come through Wednesday, August 23rd at 7 p.m. Eastern Time to get to see this system live in action uh, and get to see how the Marvel Multiverse performs. Uh, also with this one, we've got another special treat. Uh, shout outs to Matt Forbeck, the author. He agreed to do a Meet the Maker video with us, um, which will launch sometime late August. I'm not sure when it's going to come up. It's going to be after the actual play, uh, but it'll be coming up soon there. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but yeah, let's dive into the first impressions of the system. This one I'm pretty excited for. I got to play this at Gen Con, uh, and I had a blast with it. Uh, so I'm going to go through some of the things i had when I went through and played it at Gen Con, uh, but one of the things I wanted to give out right away, uh, and this one is a little bit of a thorn, it's an early thorn, I'll say. Uh, unfortunately, the Marvel Multiverse system doesn't have a PDF that you can buy. Uh, so you could either, you could buy a digital copy on Amazon through the Kindle reader, or you can go right through the Marvel comic book site and buy a digital copy there. Unfortunately, they're still about like 40 bucks compared to the 50 bucks of the hardcover. Um, I, I did buy it twice. I got my hardcover and I got it on Roll20. Roll20 is actually, I know I'm making this switch to Foundry, but Roll20 has a really good setup with the Marvel Multiverse. Gives you all the pre-gens, which we'll talk about loaded in, uh, but they also have a little character builder, too, in there that helps uh, make life a little bit easier there, too. So, uh, shout-outs to them, but that, that's what we did for this one, and unfortunately, that is why we won't be able to give away a free PDF copy with this one. Uh, so, unfortunately, that won't happen, but uh, definitely still a one that's really worth checking out. Uh, but yeah, outside of that, though, I had a really good time playing this at Gen Con. We played the um, Escape from Planet Hulk scenario. or uh, So basically, uh, it, it's kind of a little bit of a riff on the Thor Ragnarok one, uh, mixed in with some of the comic book stuff, but it was a fun one. We got to play as some of the pre-gen Marvel characters. I played as Nightcrawler. And yeah, it was, his teleportation stuff was fun. You could do some cool stuff with that. And I think the power shone through pretty well from what we got to see at the demo. Um, because in our party, we had uh, Winter Soldier, Miles Morales, Spider-Man, uh, we had Hawkeye, a couple others I'm blanking on now. We got to kind of all see their niche and could see kind of what cool things they can bring to bear. And that's one of the, the big things I would say with this system. And I think this is going to hopefully kind of fit an underserved niche within the TTRPG comic book hero space, superhero space, we'll say. Because currently there's like the, all, both of the offer, all the offerings I've played uh, in the spectrum are kind of like on two ends of the system. So you've got like the, the very system lights with a mask where it's kind of more about the emotions, more about the drama, the interactions, less about the power, less about the superhero combat and kind of all of that aspect. It's more about the relationships with kind of a young justice type feel. Uh, and then on the other end, you've got like. Uh, mutants and masterminds, champions. From what I've heard, Sentinels. I haven't played Sentinels yet. It's on my shelf, though. Uh, and they're kind of more on the crunchy side. They do very well with uh, the combat aspects. And uh, especially with mutants and masterminds and champions, they do really well at bringing to life your powers within kind of uh, constrained boundaries. So you could kind of build whatever you want to, uh, but it really it relates. You, you, their GM will know exactly what you can do with those powers. It's a lot less, I don't want to say narrative, but a lot less um, to imagination on that side that you have kind of clear boundaries of what you can do with your powers, but you can build pretty much anything you want to, especially with mutants and masterminds. This, I think, is going to kind of fit right in the middle of those two niches. Uh, from what I played uh, at Gen Con, it fits really well with kind of that super heroic combat. Uh, it's fast paced. Uh, you, you have a health bar, you have trackers, you got to feel those blows coming in. You could do cool things with your powers. Uh, and the powers, from what I saw, felt like they really lived up to the Marvel heroes they included. 
So I'm really looking at diving in and building a new PC for myself and kind of seeing how that feels to build those powers into the system versus using the pre-gens they did. Uh, but from the pre-gens, Nightcrawler felt like Nightcrawler, and I was bamping around the area and knocking people out. So I thought that was really cool. So yeah, that's I think that's going to be a good niche for it. I, I, I felt that at the Gen Con, but I'm hoping when I run it, my players see it too. And I always prefer being on the GM side of the screen, so I want to see how it feels to run. If it can, can it get that snappy, everything's moving, quick com, not quick combat, but it was a little bit more, it was somewhat tactical a little bit, but very kind of super heroic there. But if it can keep being that, it kind of bring that combat into focus, keep everything moving. And the, one of the big things too is with the PC build is easy to do. I love Mutants and Masterminds. It's currently my favorite superhero system, but it's one that you can't just bring a new player in and say, hey, build a PC, or at least I can't. I've usually found that I have to do like a quick session with that PC to go through and see what they want to do for their character and walk them through. And that first time's a little rough for them, but the second time's easier. And the third time, they're like a pro at making new PCs. For this one, I'm hoping it's one that you can go through and build a PC easily. But one of the cool things I want to say with the first impressions is even if you can't build a PC, or don't want to, or don't have time, like some of our players I know uh, are planning on using, uh, they've got a hundred pre-generated Marvel superheroes in there. They've got most of the big guys from Spider-Man to Captain America, Tony Stark, Hulk, all the all the, the, the big, especially the big MCU heroes they've got in there. Uh, and uh, there's just a ton you can choose from. I am going to put a quick grievance out there. They don't have my boy Silver Surfer. That's uh, my favorite non-X-Men Marvel superhero. I say actually my favorite Marvel superhero because a lot of times the X-Men aren't like superheroes. My, my favorite Cyclops is then followed by Magneto. Uh, but yeah, the, the, for superheroes, Silver Surfer is my favorite. I don't have him in yet. I almost did him for the PC build, but I'm being lazy. I'm using Annihilus as my big bad. Two birds, one stone. Uh, but I think that's a great thing, especially if you do buy the Roll20 one. Uh, it's not on Foundry yet. I'm not sure if they're planning on going to Foundry. I imagine they are, but didn't have time to wait. Uh, but they have all 100 in there, and your players can go through and select which ones they want to do. And one thing, too, we're going to dive into this a little bit more in our PC build, but the way they handle the differences in power levels uh, are by ranks. So there's ranks 1 through 6, uh, 6 being the maximum, kind of the stronger characters, uh, and 1 being, like I think I saw Marvel Civilians were at 1. I bet there's some other characters in there, too, that are at that uh, but you can kind of go through, if you're building your PC, they give you guidelines on kind of how many powers and different ranks and things like that you can go, or levels you can go through and pick for those ranks. Uh, you can kind of go through and build it out. So then all of the different Marvel heroes have uh, their ranks assigned to them. People I disagreed on, Namor being a four, I'm like, ah, that's crazy. You should be like a five. Uh, but uh, overall, really cool on that side, and especially if you have character PCs or I should say players who don't have the time to go through and build their PCs. This is a great way to let them do that and still participate in the fun, get to live out their, their kind of their dream of a Marvel superhero. So I thought that was cool. Uh, other big things I want to touch on the first impressions video. So they have an interesting dice system. Uh, so with this dice, uh, you only roll. 3d6. So whatever you're doing, you're rolling 3d6. They call it the D616 system. For those who know, that's the uh, both for the cinematic and for the comic books, that's what they call their core multiverse. Uh, or the core, core universe, I should say, not your multiverse. Uh, it's that D616. Uh, so when you roll that, you roll 3d6. Two of the D6 should just be normal dice, uh, but one of them you're going to designate as your Marvel dice. So I picked like a different color when I was playing in person. And what that Marvel dice does, pretty much uh, usually same as the other dice, but if you roll a one on the Marvel dice, it's treated as a six. And if you ever luck out and roll six, uh, uh, six on your regular dice, one on your Marvel dice, and six on your other regular dice. You get a crazy success. Uh, you get some narrative control over what happens there, too. Uh, so that's because it's a 6-1-6. Six, six. So typically, uh, Marvel dice, one treated as six. Sixes are still six, so it gives you some more chances to max out your dice there. Another cool thing with this one, one of the things I liked about it, I know some may not like this, but I enjoyed it. I thought it kept things moving, and especially because if you're going to be trying to emulate the Marvel movies, uh, the Marvel Universe, which I, unfortunately, like, like it or not, the Marvel movies now are kind of the, the poster child of the Marvel Universe. You want to be able to keep everything moving. You want things to be snappy, quick. Uh, you don't want to get bogged down in mechanics. And one thing I actually like that they did with is when you roll that, like if you're making an attack and you roll that 3D6, the Marvel dice, 
Uh, you've got like a little pieces where it shows your damage for different types of abilities. You got one for melee, one for ego attacks, one for tech attacks. And it shows you how much you times that by or and what you add to it. Uh, and you times it by the Marvel dice. So whenever you roll an attack, you don't need to roll for damage. You just take a look at whatever your Marvel dice was and then multiply it by whatever that statistic is. And you've got your damage and you're good to go. Everything keeps flowing. You're pretty much never going to roll more than once per turn. Uh, and I think that's a cool way to keep things moving and flowing and really kind of emulate the fast paced feel of the movies. Uh, and I liked it during the Gen Con preview, so I'm hoping I like it as a GM and hope my players enjoy that too. Uh, one thing I'll add to it as well, uh, the art on this is pretty sick. Uh, I love, I'm a huge comic book fan. I need to get some comic book stuff up there too. Uh, but I think the art does a really good job. They bring in, so they've got a mixture of their own art as well as art source from Marvel comics. Uh, and I think it's just really cool how they have that set up. So definitely one that's worth it for the art to kind of go through and browse it. Uh, and also shout outs there. Saw that a lot of comic book stores are selling the book too. So if you got a local comic book store that you support, uh, go through and pick it up there and kind of get the, a chance to see the art, even if you may not get a chance to play the game. Yeah, overall, it's a quick run through of my first impressions. I had a blast playing it at Gen Con. I'm hoping I enjoy it here. Uh, and one thing I'll kind of point out too, I know this one, because it falls right in the middle, and this could be one that's divisive in the community a little bit, because I know some of the more crunchy, like uh, the Marvel Mutes and Masterminds champion guys, maybe be a a little dissatisfied with how the powers function and how the dice system functions, where the mass folks may be like, this is more complex than I want. Uh, but I feel like it was going to be a good market right in the middle. And I think, I don't know if I fall right in that middle market, but I think for a superhero game, I can consistently play and I don't need to spend so much time helping my character, my players build their characters. I think this could be a really good fit for that. So you, uh, back for the review session to see what I think afterwards, but I'm stoked to see how this one plays out. So a couple things I want to say, uh, see how that goes. I want to really see how it is running those fights because we had like a lot of new people and some people that were new to TPT RPGs in general in our session. So that slowed it down a little bit. But with my crew, I want to see how fast paced we can make it, how much we can kind of really push the, the mechanics and push the powers to their limits. It's really how much of a kind of how much of a crazy MCU type spectacle we can make with this. Uh, and then also, I'm you know I love building characters, so I'm really excited to see how it is to build a character and map out those powers. Especially with somebody like Annihilus, who's got some crazy stuff. And I'll show you guys a picture of it when we get to our PC build. Now, yeah, overall, that's it. So make sure you come through uh, for the live actual play Wednesday, August 23rd. Keep an eye out for our Meet the Maker with Matt Forbeck. Super glad he was able to join us with that one. I had a great time with uh, uh, Karen Gillen. And I'm looking forward to kind of discussing this game with Matt Forbeck and seeing kind of a... Uh, how it was designed from his perspective. But otherwise, like, subscribe, drop a comment uh, on something you're interested about the Marvel multiverse system or something you want to see as we go through it. Uh, or even just shout out your favorite superhero and I'll let you know if they're in the book uh, because there's a ton of them in the books and a couple of obscure ones I wouldn't have picked or I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have thought, I should say. But yeah, go through and put out Shout out to the Marvel Multiverse team, but go through and make Silver Serpent for me. Uh, but definitely like, subscribe, and until uh, next time, folks.